All right, everybody. Uh, welcome to your first set of electromagnetism notes. Today, we're just going to be talking about uh, magnetic fields. So um, we've already played around with magnets a little bit. And what we've seen is that magnets can attract or repel other magnets. And they can do that without actually physically uh, coming in contact. And so anytime we have forces acting on things over distances, whether that's forces like gravity or electric forces or magnetic forces, um, we describe those forces in terms of their fields. And so magnets are surrounded by magnetic fields. And you can think of these as being similar to, like I say, gravitational fields or electric fields, although we'll see there are some differences. So this term magnetic flux refers to the density of the fields. And so in areas of high magnetic flux, we have a very dense field, and so we might experience stronger magnetic forces. And in the low flux or low density, we might experience uh, weaker. So areas with many lines have a strong magnetic field. Now, as you're no doubt aware, magnets have two ends, and these are called poles, poles of a magnet. We have north poles, and we have south poles. Now, <clears throat> It's important to note that the, uh, the magnetic fields are vectors. And because they are vectors, we, they have a direction. And so we need to represent these lines as arrows. So we need to have a way to define the direction of a magnetic field. And what we uh, noticed from the activity of the day is that when we look at the magnetic fields surrounding a magnet, they sort of loop out and around like this, this, on this large looping. And we sort of define that direction as we say, well, basically the magnetic field lines come out of the north end of the magnet and loop around into the south end. And some of them loop way around and some of them are sort of smaller loops, kind of like this. And we think about the direction of the magnetic field as the direction a compass would point. So for example, if I were to put a, a compass right here, right near this North Pole, uh, it would point to the left. And as those lines loop around over top of the, the magnet, it would be pointing back to the right. And as it loops all the way around into the south, it would point to the left again, into the south. And again, if I was to loop around in the other direction, sort of below the magnet here, you would see that it points to the right. At any point along the magnetic field, that arrow represents the direction of that. And we can sum up the behavior of magnets uh, and magnetic fields in two ways, which is opposites attract and likes repel. The so north and the south pole will attract together, two north poles will repel. And this is very similar to electric charges and electric fields, with um, you know, where positive and negative charges attract to each other, but two positive charges repel. And the main difference is that electric charges can be positive or negative, whereas magnetic poles always exist in pairs, i.e. a north and a south pole. So you can have a proton with just a singular positive charge on it, or an electron with a singular negative charge, but you can't have a magnet that's just a north pole magnet or just a south pole. They always exist in pairs. So think about a compass for a second. Now, compasses are really handy devices because they always point north. And this is because the needle of a compass itself is a magnet. And as it turns out, so is the entire planet Earth. So the Earth has this molten iron core that's swirling around, and because of that, uh, it acts like a giant magnet. Not a particularly strong one, but a very, very big one. And um, the thing about that is, we just finished saying that the direction a compass would point would be the direction of the field, and that we noticed from before that the compass points into the south pole of that permanent magnet. So why does our compass point towards our north pole? And the answer is actually kind of surprising. It turns out that if you were to look at our Earth, Geographic north on Earth is actually the south pole of the, of the Earth's magnet. So the north pole of the compass is pointing towards magnetic south 
It's just a weird case that that happens to be geographic north. All right. So that's great for magnets, but this whole thing's about electromagnetism. So where does that come in? Now, it turns out, again, from the other day, we did some experiments. What we noticed is that when we have current flowing through a wire, it seems to generate a magnetic field. So any current carrying wire will be surrounded by a magnetic field. And these fields are strange because, well, first of all, they only, they only show up when the currents are moving. As soon as you shut off the current, so you shut off the magnetic field. But the other thing is that the current surrounds the wire. And so we can predict this with something called our first right-hand rule. And there's a picture of it right here. And it works like this. So the first right-hand rule says that if you have a wire and you kind of grab the wire with your hand, and then you point your thumb along the wire, as long as you're using your right hand, your thumb will point in the direction of conventional current. Now a reminder that conventional current flows from positive to negative. And that's the opposite of how the electrons are actually flowing. And so if you point your thumb in the direction of, of conventional current, then when your fingers wrap around the wire, they will show you the direction of the magnetic field. And so surrounding this wire, you can see the magnetic field will be going around and around the wire in this direction. So fingers wrap around in the direction of the magnetic field. So let's look at a quick example. <clears throat> so imagine that you've got two wires. And um, in this case, we're going to think about the, the wires as either carrying current away from you or towards you. And if you look at a wire kind of end on, if you want to indicate uh, that it's going away from you or into the page, we draw an X as though it's going away. And if we want to show that it's coming out of the page towards you, we draw a little dot. And one way to remember that is to kind of think about an arrow. If an arrow is coming towards you, you'll see the point. And if it's going away from you, you'll see the X at the back of the arrow. Let's imagine this current is going away from us and this current is going towards us. Now, what would this look like? Now, I want you to do this right now. Take your right hand, and it only works if it's your right hand and point your thumb into the page um, over top of this wire. And look at the direction that your fingers wrap around that wire. Notice how they kind of go around the wire this way, so in like a clockwise fashion. The magnetic field surrounding this wire, and the symbol for magnetic field is B, the magnetic field surrounding this wire is going to be clockwise. Whereas if you point your thumb out of the page for the second one, and your fingers point around in the other direction, and so it wraps around like this, and we get this counterclockwise or anti-clockwise field surrounding this wire. Okay, that's it for magnetic fields. Uh, we'll see you next time.